Hey folks, what is up? NYKA31 here. Well, since my Madden 18 retirement, I have been completely engrossed in MLB The Show. I'm just shy of 70 games into my um, franchise, and I've played them all. No simming. So all stats are my stats. Whatever happens on the field, good, bad, and ugly, is 100% a result of me. And I, do, I did a fantasy draft, as you see Max Scherzer here is on the Diamondbacks, and something neat that I, well, what I think is neat is I, I like to do fantasy drafts in baseball, and also in basketball games when I do franchise mode, because I like to create a, a virtual um, fantasy land, so to speak. So what I did was I included the legends that are in the game from Diamond Dynasty in the draft pool as well. So you got Mike Piazza in there. Um, my shortstop is Barry Larkin, even though he's um, hurt, currently on a disabled list, due to come off pretty soon. My number one starter is Bob Gibson. My pitching rotation is insane. My top three are Bob Gibson, Justin Verlander, and Noah Syndergaard. My back end of my um, bullpen is Ferguson Jenkins and Dennis Eckersley. And my lineup basically consists of streaky power hitters. Not a lot of speed. Got some high contact um, hitters here and there. I got Gold Schmidt, and you see Juanes Hespedes leading off here. I have him batting lead off again because Mary Larkin is hurt. But, you know, I had to focus on being patient, working the count, taking my walks, get a bloop here and a blast there. The three-run home run is pretty much my best friend. But, in general, this is a game that I really love to play. I think it's just an excellent overall product. I don't get into online very much. I kind of gave up playing this game in online leagues um, a few years ago. Around MLB The Show 13 or 14. I gave it a shot, but I just don't think baseball translates well to online. If you have any type of delay or lag at all, it completely destroys your experience. And plus, um, the servers for this game are notoriously bad. Really, really bad. And I just don't want to deal with issues with um, bad meter input, bad PCI placement, you know, delays with my commands. So I just stick with offline, and offline is just a treat. Most of the complaints that I've seen about this game, as far as gameplay is concerned, has been online related with PCI feedback issues. I use directional hitting when I play offline. I feel like it's the most... Um, ratings based interface that there is to play with i didn't like it in previous versions didn't really like it at all um, but it's kind of grown on me this time around i read up on some directional hitting guides on the operation sports forums and now that i understand it a little bit better i'm able to you know do pretty well with it don't really have much in the way of complaints whatsoever the thing that i have to be conscious of whenever i play this game is you know just being patient being able to, or being willing and able to hit with two strikes, not being afraid of hitting with two strikes, but that's the only way that you're going to really get the computer's uh, pitch counts up and draw walks. If you just go up there hacking, at least in my experience, you're going to get steamrolled unless you're just beating up on a, a mediocre pitcher. But I guess a guy like Scherzer, um, the CPU is pretty good at hitting the spots on the higher difficulty levels. I'm playing on Hall of Fame. Um, hitting as well as pitching not default I've got a slider set again that I am using off of operation sports and I'm very happy with it and that's one of the things that I like about this game so much is that there's a lot of ways to customize it to pretty much um, make it the type of game you want to play but at its core it's this meat it's meat and potatoes baseball and then how easy or how hard you want to make it you got a whole variety of um, controller options, if a variety of visual options, like I choose to have the, the strike zone and the um, hot zones on, you can choose to you know, turn those off if you wish, a lot of camera angles to suit your fancy, you can have your pitching, not pitching, you can have your base running to be completely manual, assisted, or Automatic, same thing with your fielding. You can have your fielding be completely manual, assisted, or automatic. Throwing same way. So, how casual or how hardcore you want the game to be is completely, you know, 
up to your discretion. And that's something that I feel like um, a lot of games struggle with. The two main games that I think of when I think about that is NBA 2K and Madden. Um, we saw Madden last year start to go into the direction of compartmentalizing the game modes between arcade, uh, comp, and sim, and there are a lot of issues with that the first time around. You had thresholds that they did some tweaking to get them to work the way they were supposed to work, and you know, different areas of gameplay as far as, you know, results are concerned, play results when it comes to, you know, it can bleed passes off of UFO type of throws, drops, fumbles, and all that. It was never really stabilized to everyone's satisfaction for the entire year. So, out of the games that exist, I think this game handles those type of things the best. Because by nature, baseball is a game with a ton of variables. It's a game of percentages by its very nature. And all sports are like that. But I think Madden, I think the basketball games, NBA 2K and NBA Live, and to a lesser degree, the soccer games, Pez and FIFA, they, they struggle with combining translation of difficulty, user control and user freedom, and allowing the game to flow in a free and natural way. I think this game handles that the best. It's not perfect because when you're playing a baseball game, you're going to be playing 162 games in your season, you're going to lose games. You're going to lose games where you do everything right. You'll have games where you're hitting the ball on the nose majority of the time and hitting it right to fielders. You'll have games where you have perfect timing and either swing through, ground out weekly, pop up, because the numbers crunching that's going on underneath the hood says you have to commit an out this at bat. That's just the way these sports games go. Pitching the same way. You can, you know, make a perfect pitch on the black, low and away, and someone can bomb the ball 450 feet for a home run. You're not going to go 162 and 0. You're not going to go 4 for 4 with every batter. You're not going to pitch shutouts all the time, no matter how good you play, and no matter how stacked your team is. You're going to take L's. And I sometimes catch myself getting irritated at times because I play the game with a football mentality. I take an L, I think the world's going to end, and I want to avenge that L right away. But, you know, you can lose two out of three in a series, or you can lose three out of four on a road trip. That's just the way baseball is. So I just basically focus on keeping a good approach with my batters at the plate, being as consistent as I can doing that, and as consistent as I can with... Um, executing my pitches the way I want to, you know, execute them and let the chips fall where they may. And I think if you do that, you'll be all right. And then, you know, the ratings and all that stuff will balance out and you'll get fair results. That's been my experience with this game. And I feel the game does that so well and gives you such a good offline experience that this is really... I skipped a year. I didn't buy an MLB 17. I was having such a great time with MLB 16 and with my Rays franchise I was doing at the time, that I just kept on going. MLB 16 was more than enough to keep me, you know, satisfied. I didn't see much of a need to upgrade to MLB 17. And um, if I really wanted to push it, I probably could have kept on going to MLB 18. Well, when I got MLB 18 and import that franchise over, but I felt like starting fresh, starting something new, and going with my Mets. The Rays are kind of like my adopted American League squad. But playing with the stock Mets would drive me to drink. So, you know, mix it up and have this fantasy draft. And it's really neat. Like I said before, you get these teams with some really stacked lineups. I just finished a series a little while ago while I was playing the Cubs, and the middle of their order consists of um, Harmon Killebrew, Anthony Rizzo, and Ken Griffey. I mean, that was a meat grinder to get through, to say the least. Some will have stacked rotations, some will have stacked bullpens, some will be balanced, some will be ravaged by injuries and struggling. I get a nice um, degree of variety. It just makes it a lot of fun. This guy here is a guy I called up from the minors. Um, I drafted him in the later rounds, just kind of filling out my 40-man roster in my minor leagues. My third starter, the back end of my rotation is Samarja and New Darvish. Samarja is on the DL. He got hurt. He's going to be out for a few months, so... I gotta hold down the Ford and you know plug in as best I can for his spot, and so far so good. The first 
few innings. As you see here, I'm in the, I fast forward to the fourth inning here. Still a scoreless game. I'm still being um, no hit and shut out. And the guy Cespedes leading off the inning, he recently came off a DL. Surprise, surprise. So I'm 10 games above 500. I've had some guys banged up here and there myself. But still having a good season and hope it continues. So that's all I'm going to talk about as far as commentary on my end is concerned. Again, just... This is just a really clean, fun game to play. And I'm just strictly talking about an offline point of view. Online, I know that guys online have been experiencing something um, vastly different. A lot of PCI struggles going on out there. But on the offline world, I couldn't be more satisfied than I am right now. So I'll let you guys sit back and enjoy the game. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this game if you're playing it out there, either online or off. And I will talk to you all later. Peace. Now another 2-2. Two -two. Uh, got him on the good slider there. Swung on and missed as he's down on strikes for the second time tonight. Boy, it's been a rough go through these middle innings so far. This offense right now really doesn't have an answer for anything that he's throwing. He's attacking up. Count remains at 0-2. Batter's going to have to find a way to regroup right there. That caught too much of the plate. He knew it. He missed it. He might not get another opportunity to put the ball in play. The 0-2 pitch. Good changeup that time, but he wouldn't bite on it. Love the execution of that changeup, but hats off to the guy at the plate right now. That's a great take in this situation. Maybe bought himself a fastball. He struck him out, his eighth punch out of the ball game, and that one ends the inning. Met strand one. On to the bottom of the fourth now, still with no score. Here's Jed Lowry now. Leaving off the fourth oh. inning. Second baseman, Jed Lowry. First offering on its way. This is hit high and deep out to left. Upton going back. Gone! It's a solo shot for Jed Lowry. 12 home runs for him now thus far. And the Diamondbacks strike first. It's one to nothing. you're going to give up a towering blast to one of the best players in their lineup, it's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but a solo shot isn't going to be the Spiretti one homer that he doesn't know where this lineup's headed. He's going to have to face the real sluggers right now, and he's going to have to execute. Lying to the right side. A leap, but he can't bring it down. Base hit. He hit the corner and tries for third. And he will make it all the way to third now as that mistake proves a costly one indeed. So that's his third treble of the year. Yeah, that's not a ton, Matt, but he looks very capable there of picking up some more as the season goes on. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. And here's a slider. Strike three called, and that'll be the first out of the inning. That's what you call clipping the outside corner. Great movement on that slider, and it completely locked up the hitter. Didn't fool the umpire, though. Fastball, strike three called, as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Pretty clear he didn't like the call there on the outside part of the plate, but probably too good to take, and he's down on strikes for the second time. Yeah, that pitch was right. And two to work the count back to three and two, and he's seen a lot of pitches, too. Inside, he misses ball four. Two ways to look at this walk. If you're the hitting coach, you say, that's a great A-B. One, two. Misses for the second ball. Here now.
now the 2 2. He is swung on and missed strike three. Diamondbacks hit the board first thanks to this solo home run. We're through four. It's now 1 0 Arizona. The 1 2. Driven down the left field line. Will it stay fair? No, a little too much hook on it there. It's a foul ball. That wasn't a terrible pitch right there, but if he's going to execute and get this swing and a miss, he's going to have to get that ball a little bit further down, maybe even potentially bounce the next one. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. He goes the other way as this is hit in the air toward the gap in right center. And that's a base hit. So the no hit bid ends here in the seventh. And he will make it all the way to third now as that mistake proves a costly one indeed. Ah, they finally break through for their first hit of the ball game, so the no-hit bid will end right here. Yeah, Matty V, and this is when you start thinking about that no-no. You get into the seventh inning, Dero. As a pitcher, you start looking ahead to what might happen. And that donut stares at you from it. Let's sit him down right here. And a strike to even the count. One and one. This is going to be an interesting at-bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Now the one and one pitch is one, a changeup that's looked at for a ball. We've seen him go down on strikes more than once in this game, so this has been a better approach by him at this at bat. Much more patient, and he's gotten himself into a good hitter's count. And a pretty good take there on the slider down. It's ball three. On deck, there you see Troy to the whiskey. He's set. Here's the 3 1. Swing and a fly ball. And this should at least get home the tying run. The catch is made. Here comes the tying run from third. And the tying run is into score from third. That was a really good at bat right there. You're trying to tie this thing up any way that you can he hits the sack fly to the outfield and the tying run hit on the ground out to short backhanded and the off balance throw gets him as he takes away a hit and the side is retired off of one leg in the hole falling away that is pure magic more of MLB Network Saturday baseball after this Now pitching for the Mets, number 50, Charlie Morton. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. Swung on in the dirt, strike three. He'll throw down to first, one away. Back up the middle. Get on pass to the whiskey. It's a base hit. Giancarlo Stanton will get a chance in the inning following the base hit. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dad. To do anything with. The 2-1 home. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. And trouble it is. It's down for extra bases. Piazza is digging for home. And the run will score all the way from first. Boy, those have to feel really good, Dero. You get late in the game, you come up with a big RBI base hit right here to give your team the lead. Yeah, no one remembers that ground ball with eyes in the top of the second inning. You want... And he'll strike out here yet again. As it's been a ball game to forget thus far, four strikeouts. One for the Diamondbacks on the RBI double. Last chance coming up here for the Metropolitan. It's now 2-1 to one, Arizona. Will Smith comes on 
from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Here's the 1-0. Hard liner to center field. And that's a base hit. One for two in his first couple of plate appearances. So with that, the Mets have a runner aboard to get the inning underway. The leadoff hitter finds his way on base. Should be interesting to see the cat and mouse with the manager. Does he use the bunt right here? Do we put a little hit and run on? Do we go old school moose? Here's Paul Goldschmidt now. Skied into straightaway right. McCutcheon is under it. He's got it one away. Wilmer Flores will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. Wilmer Flores. Now the 2 1. Swung on and missed for strike number two. Not where he wanted that fastball to be, and it's three and two now. Troy Tulowitzki is on deck. Three two pitch. And he missed with it. Ball four. So that means now the potential tying run will move into scoring position at second. The close. Three one pitch. Popped him up. Piazza moving to his left. And that's the second out of the inning. The left fielder, number eight, Justin Upton. Here's Justin Upton now. Not much in the way of productivity from him so far, but he's got a chance to come through here in a crucial great take right there. You knew the pitcher was going to try and expand the zone 0-2 in a big spot. And he was able to spit on that one. Hopefully get something. Struck him out. So he'll strand the possible tying run at second. And a great job of working out of trouble as this ball game is over. Hey, we were really treated to a good one today. Bottom of the eighth proved to be the difference, though. And a good job here in the ninth to close the book on this one. Close one tonight. Two to one, the final score. The Arizona Diamondbacks came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. James Hoyt earns the victory out of the bullpen, his fifth. Will Smith closes the door for the save, his fourth of the season. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa and the lefty Dan Plezak and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network.